Today is about going to law school. Um, so I started law school in 2005, and I took the LSAT and, and I bombed it. I did. I bombed it, and I had to do a special summer program through U of D. And so I started the program, and um, it, it was going really well. So it was essentially like a crash course in law school and it was sink or swim and whoever made it through they would hand pick who would be admitted into law school and so it was typically like more minorities that were in this class um, who had done scored badly on the LSAT so I go to the class and I do really well and um, I found out I was pregnant with Jackson like a month in and so things are going well now I'm working full-time at Chase and I forgot the final exam. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I don't even know how it happened. And I think it just was pregnancy brain. Mm -hmm. Like when I say it's I legitimately bit. forgot the final exam. Not forgot it in total, but forgot the day that it was. So I thought it was a different day. And um, so naturally, I'm freaking out because I'm seeing like, okay, I'm never going to get into law school. Like I had this special opportunity to do this class to make up for my little LSAT score. So I emailed the, the professor and the professor, um, one of my professors was Barbara McQuaid. And so I emailed him with um, another professor and I emailed them and basically told them what happened. I mean, during that summer, I found out I was pregnant, I got married, you know, so it, it was a lot going on during the summer. So it wasn't like I just forgot, like, oh, you know, it's like I'm working full time. So anyways, they made a special allowance to let me come into the law school to take it. And nobody knew because I didn't want people to, because obviously people in that class, like some people didn't get into law school and I didn't want anybody to feel like, how could she get in and she didn't even take the exam? So I made it pass. Um, I was admitted to law school and I deferred for one year because it was too much. I knew after I forgot to take the exam, I said I have too much on my plate. And so I deferred it until after Jackson was born. So when I went back, he was six months. Um, I was in the part-time evening program, which is like a five-year program, uh, which was cool. And I was working full-time at Chase and then I left Chase in like November, December of 2006. And um, and then I got a job in a law firm like after my first year. Worked in a personal injury law firm, kind of decided uh, personal injury wasn't the area that I really wanted to practice because it didn't really seem, I don't know, it just didn't really seem that fulfilling to me. So uh, I had my daughter my second year of law school and then I stopped working um, because I learned my lesson from the first time and it was too much. And um, so yeah, I took like a year and a half off, which was really good, and I switched to the full-time day. So it took me from a five-year track to a four-year track, which was cool, because I don't know, I don't want to be in law school for five years. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a really long time. Right. Especially going part-time, like I just felt like it was too much. And so I switched full-time day, but I still had evening courses. And um, you know, the work-life balance, I think is probably, or law school life balance is probably the hardest thing. And I don't know for you guys like how different it is in undergrad, but for me, because I was non-traditional, I was married and I had two kids, it was it was challenging to kind of juggle everything um, because I was in a traditional marriage where my husband, he wanted me to, to cook, <laughs> to clean, <laughs> like to do, like to fulfill that kind of traditional role. And so it's hard to do that when you're in law school and the reading, like the reading load is really heavy. So I don't know, how much do you guys read a day? Uh, I'm an English major, so I read probably five to 600 pages a week. Ooh. For both, that's for both majors combined. Okay, so, so law school's gonna be a breeze. What about you? <laughs> you know, I not at all. <laughs> <laughs> do you? I try to read like one book a month. -ish. Right. Like okay. So law school, you're probably reading for each class. I mean, I would say you probably are reading a few hundred pages a week, you know, but it's not just reading it, 
for comprehension, it's reading it for comprehension also, but so when you get called on in class and you have to stand up in front of your entire <laughs> class and you're peppered with questions, then you can respond to those questions. So it's not just like, oh, I'm skimming it, reading it. Mm -hmm. No, it's I'm reading it, I'm highlighting it, I'm doing like an eye rack of the cases. And so it's a different level of reading because it takes longer, you know, because you have to take so many notes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it was challenging, balancing, all of that. But just like anything in life, you want it, you know, you'll work for it, you get it done. And so I graduated four years and um, I book awarded some classes and it was a good experience. I was on moot court for three years. Um, you know, I never, I don't think I applied, I don't even think I applied to law review. You, you probably want to be on law review, don't you? Probably. Yeah, yeah. But to me, I think law review has a prestige, but moot court is like the advocacy, you know? It's like dipping mm -hmm. your feet in that pool of being a litigator and going up against um, students. And so that was really cool. So in a nutshell, that is my experience. And so we want to talk about the truth about law school, like, you know, fears that prevent some people from going or, you know, what what is your idea of law school? Law school? Can I just say that, like, the outset is completely not what I expected it to be. What do you when, mean? When I started studying, I had read before that it's unlike any test you'll ever take. Yeah. But I didn't realize to what degree it would be that different until I started studying for it. Like the logic the logic section. Say that, yeah. I was when I first started, like when I opened up my power score book and I started reading it, I was like, how am I gonna do this? Yes. Yes. Anybody have you guys prepped for the LSAT? I took a few like fake tests or whatever to see how it is and yeah, it's insane. But I just don't understand it because the LSAT literally has nothing to do with law school. Mm -hmm. like, you know, I feel like it's like problem solving abilities and then the time is another thing. Right. They're really like when I'm studying, I have my phone with right. the logic games, especially because there's four logic games in the section 35 minutes. So that average is on eight minutes and 45 seconds each game. So that's how I study. Like I'll go through, I'll have a game in front of me, yeah. set my time for eight minutes and 45 seconds, and then like try to finish it in that amount of time. Right. No, that's Sorry. good. Have, have any of you, have you ever looked at the LSAT? Or no. You? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My, um, my freshman year of undergrad, there was like a free LSAT test and I just went. Yeah, I, I just went to just like, I like, I was like, <laughs> oh, just like cold taking it. Yeah. yeah okay. Like, yeah. Why not? I have no idea. I went in there and I was like, Yeah, but it's a, it was definitely a good like, like a good thing for me to do, like, because I was like, I think I was 17 at the time, because I, I like was young when I got into college, and like it was a good thing for me to be like, all right, like now I know where my headspace needs to be for the right. next like four years, right. so I can know how right. to do this, like yeah. eight, four years. Absolutely, now. absolutely. No, I think that's I think that's good. I think a lot of people like once they get past the LSAT, and I'll say this, I recommend a prep course, um, and I only say that just because I, I bombed it, and even though they're is really no correlation between your score and the LSAT and how you do in law school. However, having a good score can get you scholarships. And so I recommend the prep course, and I think, are you doing a prep course? No, no, the prep okay. courses, but they're just doing They're courses. expensive. How much are they? A uh, few thousand? Ones, Kaplan ones are like twelve to 1500 Our score ones are around the same amount. It's okay. online. Right. right. I would, if I took a course, I would prefer to go all in and have an in-person course, but right. the, the power score online course that Joe's taking, I think he said it was like 900. Right. Which is well, still it, I guess you have to know yourself. So I was never a strong standardized test taker. So I took the GMAT for my MBA, did terrible on that. And then I was admitted to Eastern and I was on probation for one semester and then I came off um, because I would say my grades are really good. So if you are like academically gifted or gifted with test taking, then you'll be fine. But if you struggle with test taking, I would say do it so you can get the scholarships because you probably test really high. I test really high, but yeah. I also like, I've noticed that the LSAT, it is unlike anything. Yeah. So I was, when I started studying, I was expecting like, oh, I'll do well because yeah. I've done well on standardized tests in right. my life. And then on my first practice test, I got like a 150. Yeah. And I was like a little shocked. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, like, I'm what? <laughs> yeah. I know, it was like, I'm genuinely like, like in high school, even taking like the standardized test that you had to take every year and then taking the ACT, I was like, I wasn't that worried about it, but now right. it's like, it's a new feeling because I'm <laughs> actually so worried about this. Not you nervous and Yeah. So I think the next 
concern that people have after the LSAT is, is how the tuition. So I went to a private school and when I was at UAD, I think it was roughly 33,000 a year, um, you know, which is a lot. And, but how much is Wayne State? Like Wayne State is public, so it's a lot less. Yeah, I want to say maybe 15 to 20 right. a year. And so the reality is, you know, the only way to get scholarships for the most part is like LSAT or academic scholarships, you know, if you have a really high GPA, like outside of that, it's student loans, you know, and just like mm -hmm. the rest of us, it's the student loan struggle and so, which I'm okay with. It's income-based repayment, 20 years is forgiven, you know, I'm okay with that. So I think, I, um, I just started What? I I student loans? I I yeah, I don't know. I don't, just the idea scares me of like being yeah. in so much debt for the rest of my life. And yeah. that's been a, f a factor in looking at which law schools I want to apply to. Yeah. It's like, do they give really good scholarships, like university-based mm -hmm. scholarships? Like, do they offer like grants, stuff like that? And then yeah. especially for like the higher tier schools, obviously they're more expensive. Right. So that's like the struggle I'm having is like, do I want to not be in debt or do I want to go to a top tier law school? I just think of it as, you know, if you if you if you aren't able to get scholarships, I don't think that should hold you back. Mm -hmm. um, but I get it. I have six figure student loan debt though, so maybe I'm like desensitized at this point <laughs> <laughs> because I see all those numbers and I'm like, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, and like I said, with the income based repayment, it's 20 years. Or the other option is work in public service for 10 years. So if you go to law school and you work in public service for 10 years, your loans will get will get forgiven. I didn't know. So, yeah. I just figured how to do all that. Well, I, yeah. saw, I was watching a Netflix show yesterday called Patriot right Act, and they're talking about student loans yeah. and all those like programs you can do. And I think like 20,000 people applied the last year for that. And but after, you know, after working public service, oh. and only 96 got approved. Oh wow, I wonder why. Because all the student loans, like, okay. they, yeah. No. Well, they say it's a nice bubble to burst, like after the housing crisis, which I believe it because, I mean, it sounds crazy to you all, but I, you know, went to school with a ton of people who have six figure student loan debt. Mm -hmm. So we're all just like, okay, we all have it. It's nothing new. Like, mm -hmm. before we die, they'll be paid off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hopefully. There's a section, I don't know if any of you have read Michelle Obama's new memoir. There's like a whole I section. I have the book, but I haven't started oh, yet. It's so good. I wanted There's to read a whole it. section. I mean, like, it was very inspirational to me because, like, her fad was like, the path that I want to take, even though she hated, she kind of hated being a lawyer. Yeah. Like, spoiler alert. Yeah. But she talked about like the whole process of like school and like paying for school and stuff yeah. like that. And then she like basically she says the same thing like don't let the loans keep you from. And that's I agree. High. Right, I agree. Don't don't let the loans. Um, and I think the other thing is too is just that for non-traditional students like working and going to school. And so I just think it's like everything, it's a compromise. So if you work, your grades might not be as good and you wouldn't have, because there are scholarships you can get during law school if your grades are good. So you wouldn't be able to have access to those. And if you're not placing at a certain point in your class rank, you might not have um, the greatest job opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's a short term sacrifice looking back I would say that it was easier during the period when I wasn't working. You know, it was a little easier. Um, so I think for anybody who can manage it and like not work a job. That's exactly why I had to take time off. Cause I'm like with kids and working, yeah. it's impossible. I'll, I'll just set myself up for failure. Like, yeah. It's not happening. But the other thing is too, is, you know, if you, if you do student loans, you know, you could take out loans to cover kind of like your day-to-day -day expenses, like mm -hmm. your, you know, uh, rent, mortgage, whatever. And so again, to me, it's a short-term sacrifice. I think if you will, if you are gonna work, at least take off the first year, because the first year of those core classes that are year-long classes, if you fail those classes, you have to repeat them, but they're year-long courses. Mm -hmm. And so I think at a minimum, it might be easier to not work the first year. However, you know, I worked my first year and everything, everything was fine, but it was, it was a juggling that. And I think it depends on how old your kids are. Right. So for me, I was like six months old baby, nursing, carrying my breast pump around a law school, you know, so it, it just was too much going on. So I was working, but it was a little harder because he was so young. 
But I think if your kids are like how old are your kids? Six and two. Right. So by the time you go, I think it wouldn't be as bad because hopefully your two year old older. Right. Well your six year old be in school all day. So even if you did go in the morning, like a day program or like a part time day and then try to work part time, I think you'd be fine. So, so a lot of people ask about um, programs to accommodate people who work full time. I don't understand, but those programs aren't like they used to be. So U D either they're going to stop their evening program or they've already stopped it. And so I was devastated, not because I'm still there, but because I couldn't have gone to law school if it mm-hmm. wasn't the right. part time. Right, a lot of the working people go to the right. programs. And, and, and maybe it would have been different, like if we hadn't just had a baby, if it was just the two of us, my ex-husband and I, but it's like having a, a six month old, like I had, we both had to work, you know, we're newly married. And so, um, but Wayne State I looked up, they still have their part time evening. And what about this Cooley still? I don't know. I think Cooley, Cooley always had an evening program, so I would think that they um, that they would still do it. So someone asked, like, does does it matter what school you go to? And I think it only matters depending on what your ultimate goal is. Yeah. Like, if you want to go work at one of these ritzy law firms, then 100% it matters. You know, mm-hmm. like, if that's what you want to do or you want to clerk you know, for federal judge or Supreme Court judge, and absolutely. Um, So I think you have to ask like what your goals are and then being realistic, like looking at the market. This is a saturated market. And so I think that a decision to go to law school should be very intentional, you know, and and kind of well thought out and not something you're just you're just doing to do so somebody asked about how competitive is the admission process you guys are probably know a little bit better because it's been so long since i applied to law school and it's changed a little like do you do you think it's competitive or does it Um, seem that way it depends on the school i think again because Mm -hmm. some of the like i think that wayne state has a fairly high admission rate but that's one of the first things that i look at when i'm like looking at a school so like when I visited, before I visited Harvard Law, I looked at their stuff and they had like actually kind of, it's like 12 or 13 percent, which is, and then Yale, which is the like top law school yeah. in the country, has like a six percent. So that one obviously yeah. is competitive yeah, and like people be go to like, I think more so now than before, they have like special workshops for writing your personal statement oh, and things wow. like that. So I think that in that way it is more competitive because mm-hmm. you're going like, to a specific thing just to learn how to write your personal statement. Yeah. So I think yeah. that in that way, like, there's more of a pressure to stand out, I think. Yeah. So someone asked, is it critical to have a high level of advocacy when considering law school? What do you think? Oh, I, I don't think I know. The answer is no. I always had a fear of public speaking. I didn't know that I had, like, this gift for advocacy until I went to law school. And that's why I always tell people you can't make fear-based decisions Mm -hmm. you know um, it was like the greatest thing ever that I discovered and it was during our first year of Gene Men and Williams it was like the moot court competition that's required at all law schools and so now I think you can go with zero advocacy skills if it's an like I said but it was intentional for me going to law school like Mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted to do but the dots weren't all the way connected because I'm like, well, I don't really like talking in front of people. Like, I don't really want to do that, but I know this is like my purpose. And so it kind of came out during the process. So yeah, I don't think, you know, I don't think you have to have any any skills, just as long as you know that that's something that you, you know, that you, you want to do. I mean, that's all it takes. Somebody asked about personality traits. I don't think there are any personality traits that are necessary. I mean, there's so many different lawyers. Yeah, yeah. right. See, all kind of people. All kind of people. Weirdos. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, I just think, I mean, it's, it's good to have like a collection. I mean, you see like the stuffy people who probably would fit like a stereotypical mold, mold of what you think like a lawyer is, mm-hmm. but I like the variety in the quirky people and I like the weirdos too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that wraps up our Taylor Talks. Um, tune in next time. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.